All right, so, hey, welcome to BVS Film Productions Final Cuts. This is, uh, let's call it episode two of uh, Final Cuts with Andrew Taylor, um, who's in visiting from L.A. this week. Uh, and we're talking about filmmaking, about behind the scenes. And uh, I wanted to pick up with some of the movies that Andrew's worked on. Uh, you know, we kind of left off back Oh, God, a couple of decades ago. But, you know, moving into <laughs> the last decade, let's say, but um, Green Hornet, Star Trek, Into the Darkness with Chris Pine. Um, well, Green Hornet, Seth Rogen, Carmen Diaz, um, American Sniper. We're going to come back to American Sniper. Produced by Clint Eastwood, Bradley Cooper. Um, you know, what a great picture that is. It was nominated for six nominations for... Uh, for an Oscar, um, straight out of Compton with Dr. Dre and Easy E. Well, there you go. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> Grace and Frankie with uh, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, um, Hail Caesar, an interesting picture. It never really got off the never, ground too no. much. But uh, the Coen Brothers with George Clooney, Josh Brolin, Jonah Hill. A lot of these actors that you've inter you know, you've seen or uh, had on set and worked in these films. Uh, they got their starts in certain places, and then they went on from there. Euphoria with Ro Bennett. Uh, the Forever Purge with Josh Lucas. Interesting uh, series, The Purge. If you've never seen it, it's an interesting series. Um, and then Black Panther 2, two. just uh, last year with Letitia Wright. Um, Marcel the Shell. Now, there's actors for you. Yeah. Stop motion. <laughs> that was right. Like Interactive. And then most recently, nominated. Prince of Bel Air. Plus nominated, other, Marcel. Uh, Marcel the Show was nominated, Not actually. Award. Yeah, for Best Animated Independent Feature. Yeah. You know, interesting. And it's just great to be nominated. You know, I'm not one of these Hollywood you know, uppities. I'm just, just blessed to be nominated. Yeah. Now, do you... Now, if, <laughs> if you get... If, if they do get an award, does the whole crew get an award? No. Usually, the, the director of photography... The producers, obviously. Yeah. And uh, a director of photography... Maybe. I did have a, a friend who was on um, Jane the Virgin, and they were nominated. And she, she came up with the concept that if they won, she would pull a name out of the hat, and when she got up to accept her award, she would give a shout-out to that person. And it had to be a friend of mine, Steve Foss, and pulled his name, and sure enough, she... Said that I want to thank Steve Foss for you know helping us get uh, Jane the Virgin. Nice, so, so, but yes, yeah, sometimes nice. they will. Yeah, plus you worked on a lot of commercials too, um, Pepsi commercial. and um, God, I go on like that. The California um, tourism. Oh, with Betty. Betty White. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And my favorite uh, selfie, <laughs> having a picture with Betty White. I know. Uh, we may even have that here. Yeah, we we might be have. able to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to put out there for you. But um, so let's go back and talk a little bit more about As some of these. Yes. Yes. Um, let's take let's take a look at um, maybe one of these films. And uh, you know, what was it like uh, when you talk about American Sniper? How did you get on the crew for American Sniper with Clint Eastwood? You know, it's a, Clint has had this key grip, Charlie Sedans, who's just recently passed majority of his movies going from like the 70s. Anyway, they were scouting, uh, getting ready to scout, and Charlie twisted his knee or twisted an ankle, and he couldn't go to Morocco. He didn't feel comfortable enough making the trip and then working in some of the conditions we were going to be working in. So uh, the best boy who took over called me and asked me if I wanted to go. And Who's not going to want to go to Morocco with Clint Eastwood? <laughs> that was an easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll do it. What do you want me? And how big of a crew was this? It's pretty sizable. From, from the states, yeah, we we pulled from people from the states, from the UK, and then uh, Morocco itself. Great crews from Morocco. I, I had a fabulous time with those the the guys there. It was just. Now you're 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 doing war scenes, and so where do you go in Morocco to do a war scene like the ones we've I mean, seen and blowing you can things go up? Around and, Areas of, I'm sure, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and you can, with the lens, you can make it look disheveled, add some garbage and bricks. and But so it was pretty easy over there because a lot of the, the towns, some of them were being flipped, if you will. You know, looks like they are already been through a battle, the grounds, but you add more, like a truckload of gravel and brick, and then you can 
go that way, set up on the rooftops. It's weird with some of the houses in Morocco where the first level is finished. Beautiful tile, it's been, and then as you go upstairs, it's less finished. And I think it's because the amount of taxes you would pay on the finished part of your home, like in Greece, you have a small house and that's all you pay taxes on. And then you can add on to it later on and make it this big McMansion. <laughs> but the, the idea is you don't want to show the government that you're you know, doing well. So you don't, you leave the stairs unfinished. But the, the first floor is just, the tile work is amazing. So then you take the second floor and make it look like it's hit with an RPG. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, now now, pyrotechnical specialists as well, did they come with you on the crew then? From They did, and they brought uh, blanks. And you, they brought, I think, 60,000 rounds of ammunition, blank ammunition, and they had the, they only ended up using like 5,000. So they had to uh, not only pick up the cartridges to show that this, you know, that they're not being sold or traded, uh, and then they have to, when you file a um, uh, manifest, the show coming and going, they had to leave like 20,000, 30,000 rounds of fake ammunition. What about behind. the military equipment as well? All that stuff was brought over props, usually, you know, mm-hmm. rubber guns, or uh, you could get it from the UK. I mean, every country has its own stock of, mm-hmm. of props. Uh, Humvees, uh, you know... Flipping Humvees up in the air is always an interesting trick, I would think. There was one scene we were doing a car chase in an American Sniper, and we strapped in the monitor, or uh, Clint, the, the boss, as they call him. He doesn't like a big monitor. He'll just go handheld. And he's in the back of a, the Humvee that we're chasing. They're chasing this car around, and the, the sound mixer's bouncing around trying to do his audio, and Clint's in the back <laughs> holding on with one hand and just making sure they got the scene. <laughs> but it's pretty funny to see the. He was what eighty at the same at the, at that really? time in his life. Yeah, wow. He's, he's now ninety, and I hear he's starting another movie to direct. That's what I understand. So, so he was hands on. Clint was hands on. Oh yeah. Here's the dynamics of the the, the shooting as as I saw it. The we'd show up for work the day, and we had our scenes to do. The uh, first director, first AD which is uh, right below the director, and he's in charge of scheduling and, and, and giving everybody their call times. The producer and the director of photographer show up, and they'd scout, they'd look around, okay, we're gonna shoot this way first, and then we're gonna turn around this way because the sun, we want the sun always to be backlighting, and so you shoot this way so the sun's here, and then when the earth rotates and then the sun's over here, then you wanna turn around and just always have the backlight behind you. And then Clint would roll in about an hour or two later and then they would tell him, this is where you're going to be shooting. This is what you're going to be doing. He goes, okay. And then the actors come on board and then one or two takes, he's done. Wrong. What about Bradley Cooper? I mean, uh, was he He was in work? character all the time. He played uh, Kyle. What was this guy's name? Kyle. I forget the, the, the American sniper. Yeah. He was in character. He's from Philly, but he's playing this guy with a Texas accent. He wouldn't break character for it at all. He always had that accent. Wow. Which was smart, but super nice man. Yeah, yeah. You go up and talk to him about things, and uh, he was always ready to go. He wanted to do more takes, but Clint got what he wanted, and usually mm-hmm. Clint's oh, right. Now, you shot over there. Did you also do some shooting here as well? Here is in Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a, a set up in the deck uh, about north of Hollywood that they build some of these uh, Iranian, Iraqian you know, sets that you can go and actually do the big blow-ups and blow-up walls and everything. But uh, yeah, we did that there and a couple windstorms we did down around San Diego. So I'd say a third of it was done in Morocco. Wow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how you can do some of these sets um, you know, remote, but as well getting back into yeah. a sound stage yeah. in Warner Brothers or at MGM or Universal. Yeah. And uh, and then it's just all built there, like Star Trek. You called me the one day and said you were on the deck the of the Enterprise. Every time I walk through the doors, I go, whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> just like in the TV show. <laughs> Nothing would happen. The funny thing is, I, I remember telling the the not the director, but J.J. Abrams, but the uh, first idea. I go, why do you guys have this in the script? Night. We're in space. <laughs> There's no day or night. It's just you know, it's like a. But, 
We're in space. The audience needs to know whether it's day or night. Ah, uh, yes. Waking up in the morning in space. In space. So, Well, yeah. you could walk. That was a cool part of the set. You could walk from uh, Control, where uh, Spock and Captain Kirk would hang out. You could actually, they had built a hallway. Whoosh, whoosh, you go through the hallway. Whoosh, you go to the transporter room. You could go to the medical room. There was all there. It was all connected. Wow. That was that was pretty. For someone growing up, like in the, like we did and watching that stuff in the 60s yeah. and 70s. I think they only did three seasons of yeah. Star Trek. It's become so popular, iconic. Did they still do models then? You know, Back in the 60s, obviously, they had the model Enterprise and yeah. they would film it like that. Uh, I wonder if they did models of the actual Enterprise. It was all digital. You know. After J.J. Abrams started reboot, the, they learned that the first um, thing, they had glass. Then they, they found out there was too many reflections so then they popped the glass and just put green screen out there. So you didn't have all that reflectional. Uh, yeah. It's hard for people who do green screen to, to put in their image. Yeah. And, and you know, looking at green screen too, the, uh, the world of green screen is really part of what's being done a lot today. Yeah. yeah. You know, you were telling me about uh, Black Panther 2 and the green oh, screen that you guys that. built. How I've was that? Seen. Who says yes to all this money? We're spending a hundred thousand dollars on uh, just equipment to put a green screen on, it just sits there. Yeah, yeah. So who okay's this stuff? Well, it was built out of uh, <laughs> I know shipping the producers, Sh shipping containers, five stories high, all locked in with a with a track for blue screen that we hardly ever used. Really? Because we have other expensive equipment that comes in the thirty by thirty frames, and you could actually put them on a. Uh, a condor or a petty bone and get him right behind the actor so because that's all you need in green screen you just need to contain the actor everything else is garbage back then they don't really care about that you just need to get there but right in on it but to spend that money <laughs> they dug a, in a parking lot they dug us a pool like 10 12 feet deep in the parking lot in the parking lot <laughs> how do you fill the pool in the parking lot with uh fire trucks and a hose uh, yeah oh yeah a lot of fire trucks and hoses. Yeah, there's yeah. stages in, in Hollywood at Warner Brothers and Sony uh, that are built pools underneath. You pop off the floor, and there are pits. Wow! Wow! That they can either build the sets in, and or or, or swimming. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. You know, and well, it's amazing. You know, we went uh, and from uh, like I said, the days of wires and models way way, way back oh, yeah. when to. Green screen, which is in so many movies and special effects. And now, um, you know, just recently you were showing us about this metaverse um, yeah. digital sets that they don't exist whatsoever. It's all digital. computerized panels that can create a total reality on the other side where the actors are in front. But it could be any type of scene. The detail they have is unbelievable. That's what I was telling you. They have uh, a desert scene. You can see dust in the background going across the, the monitors and it makes it look real. It enhances the, uh, what we do. The wind, you know, you see flags flowing in the back where it's just the video monitor. Or if you want to see armies approaching, you can armies, do many yeah. people way back in there that look. So that's so another great job for people today is uh, they need code writers. They need uh, people who can draw and, and build these kind of, universes and techs who understand how everything gets together and goes to the server and, and then they can program everything. You know, there's just one aspect is the programmer, but you still need code writer to, to show that there's our sconces up there that are light that can go on and off as, as you deem what you want. Yeah. And another cool thing about the AI, which is you, you have a camera, your main camera, whether you're in a Technocrane or a Dolly or whatever you are, and it's on a hot head, which means the, the, the operator is away from the crane and he's at a little area of his own. He has a monitor and he can run the, the camera and do what it, <laughs> whatever he wants to do. But as the camera pans, so does the set. The video set, will, they'll track, they have tracking sensors up in the top of the screen that, and then they put a sensor on top of, of the camera. So when, when the camera pans, the background pans with it. Wow. That is awesome. It's well, then you add on to that mind. drones. Now, there's more drones, drones yeah. being used yeah. than ever before. Uh, <coughs> and then FPV drones, which are your 
you know, facial point of view. Yeah. We were actually flying this drone through rooms and scenes and yeah. around people and everything else. You were sort of a, not a drone, but in Purge. Oh, yeah. You had to follow the cameraman through a total battle scene in the street. Yeah, the, the, uh, the PR people asked me to put on a GoPro on a hat. Because they wanted to, to enhance that and show it to people. And it was pretty, wow, because that was another one of those shots like in uh, Straight Outta Compton where the camera's on the bus and the people get off the bus and as right before they do, the, one, the, the operator holding the camera hands it off to someone else and then they bring out the people and they turn around and now this uh, guy is walking down with the camera following behind. Which is, and... Tanks are going off, explosions, people are being hung and decapitated, you know, all around there. And you, you know, trucking along. And by the time, you know, they cross the street, the tank comes down and blows people up. And it was all one take. Wow. It's just... Uh, Incredible. Yeah, the yeah. technology that's... Uh, that's you can't it. do that with whole film cameras anymore. I mean, it's nice to have these, like, video cameras. Right, right. Uh, well, you know, and um, for those out there that may be watching that... Um, are in school or, uh, you know, want to try to get into the industry a little bit. I think there's two avenues that you may be looking at here, maybe more than that. I mean, yeah. you start looking at all the areas where you go to art school, you can go to cinema school, um, but computers and computers doing total design, um, just like doing video games. I mean, there's a whole yeah. animation side of that that you can look into from a schooling Absolutely. standpoint. Absolutely, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, and electricians. If you want, you know, we always need electricians on set. Mm -hmm. uh, used to do framing and construction, art department, but now it seems to be going that way of the uh, artificial intelligence uh, yeah. scheme. But yeah, programmers, that's a growing field. Um, any any diverse anything you want to do, yeah. you could probably do it in the film industry. Well, do I mean do you you know? You hop on a bus and head to L.A. and then hope to get into a studio. You really need to know someone in the business. Definitely need to know someone, yeah. Yeah. And like you know, in this business or any business, it's who you know. Right. Working, showing them that you'll show up on time. If you're, uh, you don't want to be five minutes, you don't want to be on time. You want to be at least five, ten minutes early, right? You want to be enthusiastic, which after 30 years I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could really care a little. Started caring a little less, my, but my uh, sense of uh, monitoring my own language that comes out of my mouth towards uh, some things that I see that I wouldn't say as a youth, but now that I have <laughs> some experience behind me that I, I do. But I'm, but be, that's just me being me. But getting back to that, the the kids just wait for your opportunity. It's gonna come. It's gonna pop. And if you want to be a, a big fish in a little pond, that's fantastic. If you want to try out there, if you have a connection that you think you can get in, be a, a little fish in a big pond, you'll, you'll grow. You'll expand to that pond. I th uh, I you look today and you see everyone has a phone. Everyone, everyone has, has a camera. Yeah. Everyone wants to do their own um, podcast. Instagram or podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like... What is it? How many? What's the movie? Uh, too many murders in the building, or um, was Martin Short? That, yeah, Martin, Martin Sheen and Martin Short. Yeah, and uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Yeah, that's all about wanting to do a podcast. Yeah, is what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, the uh, no, I think um, there's a lot of avenues. There certainly is a lot of avenues a lot, a lot. to take that into the next level and uh, and study. But, you know, it, it all comes down to if you really put your mind to yes. it and you want to do something, you dedicate yourself and it will come. It, it will, will come. come. It yeah. will come. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, Andrew. I really thank you for coming in to uh, sure. visit us today. Well, thank the writers. And, yeah. Thank the writers. For being on strike. For being on strike this <laughs> week. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So you're going to pick up on Prince of Bel-Air. Um, Hopefully when it comes back, it's going to, once they settle, it's... Though uh, it'll take a while for the scripts to get written, and then when we left, we left the stage pretty much with all the lighting and, and, uh, and uh, set dressing, and everything's intact. We had three or four stages, so that's kind of ready to go. The the big bones of it, and just got to get down to the uh, the mm -hmm. writing aspect. What studio is that in? That's We're at Universal. Universal. Yeah. 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 
That's cool. crazy. We see the trams come around every day, and, the, and that's where the money. Oh, is. people are on the tour. Oh yeah, if you count a couple hundred dollars for you people, you know, they're sitting in a tram, and there's eighty people in one tram. You do the math. <laughs> The trams take over. You have to shut down production if they come around. Oh, wow. They will not let you film. They don't want you filming. No. No. That's interesting. Until the trains go by. Yeah. Well, hey, again, thanks again. And uh, for those of you out there that would like to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, what's going on behind the scenes and also what's going behind the scenes of BVS Film Productions, and uh, go ahead and subscribe to Final Cuts and click the log. Let's face it, everybody loves to make podcasts and vodcasts, but nobody wants to edit them. Well, except for us. At Premier Podcast Productions, we professionally edit and distribute podcasts and vodcasts for companies around the world. Our process is simple and affordable, allowing you to stay focused on what you do best, developing great content and building your subscriber base. From recording and editing to final distribution and marketing, we can help every step of the way to make your podcast stand out and get the results it deserves. Contact us today at premierpodcastpros.com to take your podcast to the next level.